District 1. Um, I just want to say really quickly before I go over my quick uh, the updates is how much I've enjoyed um, serving on the City Council. I'm so honored to be here and I've really enjoyed working with a lot of the folks, especially in District 1, going to a lot of homeowners meetings and other uh, meeting with folks. It's, it's really truly heartening to meet with the folks that care so much about this city. Um, first off, I, though I would like to uh, introduce, I have a few of my, the commissioners for District 1. Um, we, we, we do promote, um, these folks are volunteers that, that, that give their time to serve on the commissions in the city. It's really important. So commissioners for District 1, would you mind standing? Okay, back in the back, there's um, Dave Anderson. He serves on this uh, senior commission. Nick, Marguerite Mazzini. Oh, thank you. Margaret Mazzini is on the BZA, and Tony Breslin is on the Planning Commission. These folks give up a lot of their time. Thank you. Um, okay, um, I'm just going to talk about a couple of different things. Um, District 1 encompasses um, most of the media downtown area. Um, there's a lot of things uh, that are happening. You saw on the screen a, a, a lot of the things that are physically happening. Um, in addition to that, I wanted to let you know uh, about um, parking. Um, we are doing a downtown parking plan. Um, the city's developing uh, a, a downtown parking management plan, and the goal is to support the downtown businesses, help regulate downtown parking, improve parking efficiency, and reduce parking impacts on the surrounding residential neighborhoods. Um, the plan recommends various updates to downtown parking regulation and practices related to the downtown parking garage, on-street meter parking, uh, public retail parking lots, residential street parking, and enforcement pract practices. Um, there have been at least um, three uh, meetings so far. We've met both with businesses, two. Oh. Felt, felt like three, really. Okay, two, two meetings. Um, one we met with uh, business owners, and we've also um, called one for the, for the residents. Um, the plan is still in process. It hasn't been completed. Uh, final recommendations, um, which include feedback back from the local residents and businesses, will be presented to the city council at an upcoming meeting. So you still have a chance to uh, have your voice heard if you um, want any impact. Um, then the other thing I wanted to talk about is we're um, in the process of activating um, some of our downtown public spaces. Um, you've all seen, um, I'm sure, the wonderful uh, chairs, seats, and umbrellas that have gone up downtown. We're really hoping to engage um, the citizens to come and spend time down there. Um, in particular, how many, of, how many of you have been to Casa Peralta? Show, okay. Oh. Well, that's great because not a lot, not everybody has. But um, we wanted you to know that that we're there. There's a conceptual improvement plan being developed, and we've um, engaged an organization called Architectural Resources Group of San Francisco. Um, they they conducted a detailed site investigation in early March, and found that the building was structurally sound. However, there are maintenance improvements needed. So a public outreach meeting was held on May 3rd uh, to gather opinions and ideas of the, from the community on what can be done with the CASA. The conceptual plan and estimate will be completed by late summer 2015, 2016, excuse me, and we will be presented to the public prior to starting development of the construction ready plans. Um, specifications, estimates, which is slated to start in, in fall 2016, but completion is tentatively, tentatively scheduled for spring of 2017. Um, the, the Casa Peralta volunteer docents, um, the San Leandro Improvement Association, known as SLEA, and Homeowners Association, the San Leandro Historical Society, the San Leandro Chamber of Commerce, the San Leandro Arts Commission, and Library Department um, were all directly involved in, um, in working on this plan. Um, it's, it's, a jewel in our, it's a jewel in our city. Um, we're putting some money into this historical site. Um, I'm hope, we're hoping to uh, get more and more engagement. Um, they're talking about having a, a, a coffee truck on, on site, and it'll be a place for people to come and stop as they're 
walking home from BARD or on their way to BARD. It's, it's, going, it's a valuable resource and I'm really looking forward to that. The second um, space that we're going to be, uh, there's going to be new changes to is Joaquin Plaza. Now, I don't know if any of you, if you know where that is, that's where Joaquin Street ends into the um, Washington Plaza area there. We have already um, cleaned the wonderful, a beautiful fountain that's there and the water is running again. It's recycled water, so it's, it's just uh, so you know. But in addition to that, next month, the Exploratorium Science Museum will install an interactive exhibit. Um, this exhibit will include eight large chimes that can be activated by moving a rocking chair. You'll, you'll, it'll be an interactive, you'll actually sit in it. Now, the chimes can be activated individually or together, creating harmonic, soothing sounds. Um, this installation is part of a larger effort to activate downtown San Leandro for residents, visitors, and shoppers. The city received a grant that is paying for this from the California Department of Housing and Community Development and has been working with the Exploratorium over the past year to bring this interactive exhibit to the community. So briefly, those are a couple of things I wanted to let you know about. Again, as, as the mayor mentioned, we'll, we'll all be around for questions and anything later. Thank you very much. I have a very loud voice, so maybe I don't need a mic, but I think it's always helpful to hear someone with a microphone. My name is Ursula Reed, and it's wonderful coming here because I remember uh, when I started this journey uh, on the city council, I'd come into a room like this and I'd know no one in the room. <laughs> now I come in and I know at least a third of you. <laughs> and there's some new faces, and so that's always good to know. There's some new faces in the crowd that are coming out to hear what we have to say. Um, I would also like to have my commissioners stand up and be acknowledged. I have three, everyone, one, two, let's see, Helena, you're one of my commissioners, come on, stand up. She's not so Come on. All right, so Helena Slaughter is my library historical commissioner. Brian Acevedo is from recreation. And Ed Hernandez is from planning. Thank you all three very much for your time. As I said on the video, we, um, I talked about the Bayfair and the TOD plan. We actually have already started working. We have a group that is comprised of different community members, business owners. Um, we, we did a long, uh, a kind of a, we, we put out an announcement to get people into this uh, specialized planning uh, group and we came up I believe we have 22 I'm looking for Tom 21 21 folks so um, we already uh, had one meeting and if that's something you're interested in let me just tell you a little bit about what they're they're doing is that um, as you know over in district one there's the bridge development and that's coming up pretty quick we're trying to do another transit-oriented development down at the Bayfair BART station. That is the move for all the BART stations to have uh, housing near them. So the um, MTC, which stands for Metropolitan Transit um, Commission, thank you, uh, has given us a grant for $440,000 to put together the plan for what we'll do at the Bayfair BART station. So um, we have already met once, like I said, and the second meeting is coming up very quickly, 5-11, a couple days. What, we meet at the Senior Center, and the committee's already formed, but if you're interested, you can come and listen and be there for support and throw some ideas in the mix. That's always helpful. Um, we are looking to have some mixed use, so there's business below and housing above. You know, uh, businesses will more likely come to San Leandro if there's people close by to buy things from them. So um, we are looking to make sure we put something there that's going to be um, 
community friendly and something that you all would desire and like to uh, visit. So I had asked uh, for my spiel to have a lot to do with what's going on in District 2 as far as businesses and new developments. So I did notice though that the San Leander Times said it was going to be District 1, 3, and 5. So I might throw in a couple things from 3. Uh, we have uh, it near the Bayfair, you know, Bayfair is a center, so the center, we all have all these businesses outside the center that are getting a lot more uh, mileage as far as people going and purchasing items from the outside of the mall, and we're trying to also figure out how to get people inside the mall. So that's one of our uh, challenges. We do have the DSW Shoe Warehouse that just opened up there. Um, Sleep Train has moved from over by Ross to across the street. Not quite sure, across the, the way. Not quite sure about that as far as very much difference there, but they moved. Um, we have a new Pizza Hut, a new Aloha Sushi and Barbecue, a new Cinco Taco Bar, and they've opened City Health Urgent Care Clinic a digital sign and graphics, a uh, new pharmacy, and Thrive Home Care. There's also opened a Scanner International on Washington Avenue. Um, one thing I'm really excited about, though, is that we have, uh, and this is a good one for Keith to uh, go back to, is that we are now taking all of the lights, this is very exciting to me, and changing the LED in the city. My district is from Bayfair all the way over to uh, the Senior Center, then up to San Leandro High School. And there are a lot of streets in my district that are very, very, very dark. And I was driving by the bus stops the other day, saw a lot of people at the bus stop, but there was no lights. And so that kind of presents a scary situation for neighbors, people that want to use public transportation if it's very dark. So that's one thing. As a city, what we're doing is changing all the lights to LED so it'll be brighter and nice, clear, clean light. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we are, if you notice, we used to have a, a landmark that's gone now, Prings. It used to be at the Triangle, there was Prings Restaurant. It is demolished, gone. If you haven't been over in my area, Prings is gone. It's torn down. So uh, we are waiting for a new restaurant to come. It's, a, it's going to be a Chinese restaurant, and I guess they got into uh, the building, and it was, they had to, I guess it was poor quality or something, and they had to demolish the whole thing and start over. So uh, Prings was a landmark. We should have all went out and said goodbye to Prings, but hopefully we're going to get something bigger and better and nicer. A um, couple more things and then I'll turn it over. Uh, the, we're hoping, uh, also there was a Karo's there, if you know the Triangle area, there was a Karo's there and that uh, shut down and we're hoping, crossed fingers, for Mel's original diner to go there. Crossed fingers. Um, and very close to District 2. In District 3, we're excited that we're going to have living spaces coming to the Kmart that was there. Very excited. They're, they have uh, advertisements and they're taking applications and, you know, they're getting ready to open that store. I've seen the commercials already on TV. And um, the craft plant that is now, we're looking for a new owner, someone to come and take over and build something wonderful there. All of this is happening, exciting things happening in District 2, even though that's District 3. All right. Can they ask questions right now? Or do you want later? What about the triangle? What's going to be? Put the statuary there or what? We're yeah. Everybody We're going to all present first, and then we'll go back to your question, because we do have answers for you. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here tonight. My name is Karina Lopez. I'm the council member for District 5, and I see a number of constituents from District 5 here tonight. Thank you for joining in. 
along with the general community, I wanted to have my commissioners uh, also stand this evening and so I can introduce you. Don't be shy, come on. You're not normally shy there, Mike Santos. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Santos on BCA, Arlene Carino uh, from our Human Services Commission. So these yeah. folks, oh, and then Anna Edwards from the Arts Commission. So these <laughs> folks, These folks give up a lot of their time for our benefit in order to vet a lot of the issues very specifically so that when they come up to the council, we know we have full faith that the conversations have been fully um, gone through and we're able to vote on the matters in a quicker way. So um, without them, we, we wouldn't be able to do our work as council members. So thank you again. Um, there are a lot of things happening all over the community that we can be so proud about. Um, I'm sorry that the portion on Sanford Verde Park didn't come up very well, but it's a project that's in the works um, and it has been a labor of love and a vision amongst many people for many years now. It's been about eight years in the works. And the ribbon cutting will be later on this year, later on on a Saturday. So the city will be announcing that date when it happens and you, of course the public will be invited to come and participate and celebrate um, that, um, that big monumental feat of rehabilitating a park. I wanted to go into two specific items this evening that has drawn a lot of interest in District 5. One is development at the old CVS site at the corner of East 14th and Callan. So the city has owned the parking lot area, so we had a lot of say so in how um, the future of that particular site will look going forward. And we have selected a developer, local developer, um, by the name of Sansom Pacific Properties to develop that site. And it is a TOD site, so it's a transit-oriented development site. And along with that then, um, we're looking to have about 20,000 feet of retail space and hopefully a specialty grocery store with and up to 90 housing units there, um, along with our vision of providing high density housing in the downtown area. The multi-story building will be of high quality design that highlights the central corner and makes um, the downtown um, uh, that more attractive um, than, than it is now. And there's so much happening there that in, in three, five years, it's just gonna be, um, gosh, it's gonna be a very exciting place to come visit. And um, the people who actually do come and, and live in that um, particular development are gonna be in a very fortunate spot to reside in. Um, and then tonight we have some special folks joining us from AC Transit and they're sitting in the corner over here and we're going to be talking a little bit about a special project that uh, is through Oakland and San Leandro and that's the BRT project, the Bus Rapid Transit project. And the AC Transit Board of Directors uh, recently awarded the construction contract of $108 million to the BRT project which includes infrastructure and station platforms from downtown Oakland through San Leandro. And this is a really, um, really exciting project because it'll facilitate bus service in a way that um, it is going to really be a game changer for the community. Uh, we're gonna have bus service that basically during the peak hours runs every five minutes per station stop. And there'll be four station stops. One of them will be on a raised platform. Um, and then the other three will be along the curb. And that'll all end up at a, an upgraded transit center that's located at our BART station. So it's a collaborative effort really between municipalities, AC Transit, and uh, BART to really best facilitate uh, public transit and walkability hopefully to uh, public transit so people can have access and not have to necessarily drive down to the BART station and look for parking there. So. Hopefully what will happen there is the people from the neighborhood in the north area will walk to um, the stations and then use that to get to BART or to even the downtown area. So construction is looking to come upon us pretty soon in July of this year and we're looking to start service in November of 2017. It operates 9.5 miles of route. Uh, stops and it will be you know environmentally friendly and the buses will be um, state of the art and there will be a, um, 
a continuation of our fiber optic loop and there'll be um, high speed fiber that will run on that section of, of East 14. So that'll be very good for the North area as well. And something that we'll be able to hopefully leverage for other purposes in the future. So it's, I think it's a win-win for the whole community. And um, if there's any questions um, regarding more specifics, well, I'll be over in this corner at the end um, of the evening to answer specific questions on the BRT project or the development at East 14th and Callan. <coughs> And um, kind of a general uh, look at things, um, I wanted to let you know that uh, you're noticing all the pavement getting fixed in the area. We've spent um, 4.9 million this year, 7.5 million for next year so far scheduled, um, filling potholes um, and doing some street repairs. So um, as you go through and you get stopped by things or detoured around, um, please bear with us, but it's something that we've all waited a long time to happen. And with that, we're also looking at, um, you know, our bike lanes and so forth, and we've got some of that around here to talk about because making the city more livable. Um, East 14th. East 14th is a street um, that we have a lot of plans for, however, we have no control over. Um, East 14th is owned by Caltrans, so Caltrans limits what we can do to that. And um, what we're trying to do, though, is um, I'm sure if anybody's driven down, you know the kind of shape, he's, you know, it's not in very good shape at all, especially down towards the Bayfair area. Um, we've got a few things coming with the BRT. Um, they're going to be doing some road repair, but we're trying to get Caltrans to repair that, the underlayment, before they do all of the um, striping, because otherwise they're going to have to do it twice. So um, in the next two or three weeks, we're um, asking Rob Bonta, who is our state assemblyman, for this area to come walk it with us. Since Caltrans is a state agency, um, and Rob is a state um, politician, that perhaps we can marriage the two and get some action um, pushing the repairs for East 14th forward. The next thing that I've been working on a lot, um, kind of behind the scenes so far, is San Leandro Hospital. We're still in the, the predicament that um, the hospital is going to um, be doing some rehab. Most floors, there's three floors that they want to do rehabilitation for the county on, and they feel that once it's opened, that will sustain the hospital and allow us to keep our emergency room open. But until we can get that in place, the capital improvements in place, we have a money gap to fulfill that. And so I've been working with um, anybody who will work with me practically. I've been to Sacramento twice in the last month to testify before assembly hearings to get um, a, a couple of measures through the assembly to help us get the money that we need for the hospital. And um, with that, Mayor Halliday from o uh, Hayward has gone with me the last time we went, and both of us testified about um, not only San Leandro Hospital, but St. Rose Hospital, and Eden Township, which is the um, organization that is supposedly in charge of our hospitals, but I don't feel that they're giving us um, the service that we demand and that we need to keep our hospital open. So you'll be hearing more about that as we, um, as the season heats up as they say. And then and the last thing I wanted to mention is um, one thing that's very important to me and also uh, my fellow council members is sustainability, climate change, and all of those things that go into making our earth sustainable. And um, we have a plan on the council and we're going to be picking out parts of those plans more and more to concentrate on. We've got a lot of um, things happening with the county. If you're not aware, the county is looking to um, form their own joint powers where they're going to bring in energy. pg e would still deliver your energy, but it would be um, um, managed by a joint powers in Alameda County. That's one possibility. We also have some firms in town that are trying to do things with different parts of our town, and we're trying to um, make it so it's easier for our community to trust in solar and the different things that we're going to have to need to put into our, our city to be able to make it sustainable and that's coming so um, as you know we're we're going to try to make it um, much more user friendly and community friendly because we're only as good as the community and so if the community is buying into that if they want to see these changes then we'll all work together to make them happen and with that um, we've 
set this meeting mostly for your questions and answers, and so that's what we want to do. And so today they will explain how that's going to work and time limits and all that. Thank you, um, council members and, and the public. So we're going to head into uh, the public comment portion of the evening. Um, if you would, if you feel more, more comfortable not providing a public statement but would still have some comments and questions, raise your hand and I'll be sure to um, give you one of these cards. I'll leave some on the police table and then there's more up here. Um, we'll also leave some time, about 15 minutes at the end of the evening, in case you have specific questions about a department that we have. So just to go around the room, we have Recreation and Human Services Department. They have the summer guide, and they'll also help you register for the new uh, reg re registration system. We have East Bay Mud out there, who will be t uh, has information about the dam uh, retrofit, as well as a meeting that's happening later this month. I'm sorry. Oh, the meeting already happened. Well, he can give you more information. <laughs> we have engineering and transportation um, who can answer some specific questions about your neighborhood and some uh, whatever, in what, whatever information you need. We have staff present. We have AZ Transit who has information from the bus rapid transit. And we have our police department who also has a lot of information about resources available to you. So we're going to go ahead and begin with the public comment. Um, each person will have a limit of three minutes. You can, you don't have to use the three minutes, but the reason that we have a time limit is to allow everyone that wants to speak to speak. So um, I will have, I will sit right here and I have three cards. I will let you know when you have one minute left, when you have 30 seconds left, and when your time is up. So um, you guys can go ahead and start lining up and our city manager will direct the questions on uh, which person is the most appropriate to answer it. Um, and we'll go ahead and begin. This might go through. 